Hi guys, I was recently contacted by a member of the Step Project team, Terminator, and he told me some, well, some bad news regarding Skyrim and a, basically a limit to how far you can mod the game. It would seem that if you push your game's RAM, the usage of your RAM by Skyrim to 3.1 gigs, it will crash. So if you have got a heavily modded game and you are pushing that limit, unfortunately, if, you, if you've started to notice crashes, it could be you've actually pushed it too far. And it doesn't matter how much memory you've got, it doesn't matter how good your system is, it seems to be a fairly, you know, it's, it's a limit that cannot be passed no matter what. Now I have not been able to confirm this myself, I have not managed to reach the 3.1 limit quickly. As you can see here, I'm using about 2.5 gig of RAM, and this is about the most I've been able to get it to load so far. My game is not that heavily modded though, I'm using the Bethesda high, high def textures, I'm using the Skyrim 2K textures, and a few other texture packs, things like A Medium Born, and a few mods and that type of thing. But obviously that is not as, hard, as uh, modded as some people's games. Some people are using every texture pack in existence, some people are using the automatic variants which loads multiple textures for the same creatures, and so on. And perhaps if you are if you're outside and you're loading more grids than the default, you might be hitting the memory limit sooner. I am not 100% sure. But as you can see, I'm not that far off the limit myself. So, um, yeah, there you go. Not good news, I realize. And if you are wondering why on earth textures are being loaded into RAM rather than VRAM, I'm not 100% sure, but it does seem as if those textures are being mirrored. Um, and the exact ratio is not exactly known, but it's approximately for every 500 megabytes of VRAM you're using, it uses about 430 megabytes of your physical RAM. So there, you know, I mean, not 100% sure why it is doing that. I can tell you that Bethesda do not intend to fix this if, if they even consider it a bug. Remember, they, you know, they've made the game moddable, but they don't necessarily support uh, the ability to mod the game to infinity. Now, I have only just become aware of this myself, so of course I don't know all the details. If you want to join in the conversation, I'm going to leave some links down below to the Step Project forums, and you can check out all the information there. But obviously, this probably means you should be a little bit more selective about the mods you install, especially ones with large textures. If, if there are two different versions, one with a super large texture and one with a large one, and you try them out, and you barely notice the difference between the two, I would use the smaller one. It depends on the resolution and how sensitive you are to these things. And obviously, mod authors should consider this when making their mods. You know, be, be a little bit more careful with the textures you use, and uh, just, just think about this memory issue. If you are curious about how much RAM and VRAM you are using, you can use a program called the Skyrim Performance Monitor, and as you can see it in action here, it's telling me how much RAM, VRAM I am using, and also telling me whether it's my CPU or my GPU that's currently being pushed. As you can see here, it's my GPU that is being pushed right now, but my system's fairly, it's got a lot of room to spare if I cap at 60 frames a second, which I do at the moment. Um, I will show you how to install that. It's, be warned, it is not a mod, really. It is not something you're going to install with Nexus Mod Manager. It does require you to install a program and set it up. I will show you how to do that if you're interested. Um, but if you're not, you probably can stop watching this video right about now, because that's, that's it. So there you go. There is a limit to how much you can mod your game, I'm afraid. Okay, so if you want to install Skyrim Performance Monitor to check the resource usage on your own game, go along to the Nexus page, the file section, and download it manually. Do not download with Nexus Mod Manager, download it manually. It will come as, a, as an archive, as you would expect.
And once you have downloaded the archive, simply extract it with WinRAR to your desktop. Then you can actually delete the archive. Now there are a few things you're going to need to install before you install uh, this monitor. If you open the folder, there is a readme text and towards the bottom it does give you full details on how to install. The first thing you're going to need is the Microsoft.NET Framework. There is a link included here, so select it. You'll find it under the installation section. Select that whole link and go here. Download and follow the instructions. It's pretty simple. You also need something called SlimDX Runtime and they give you a link to this, but in actual fact, the download comes with the version two of this and that was the one I had to use to get this to work. When I used a later version, I had some issues. So I actually recommend you just use this. Double click it, follow the instructions and install. As you can see, I've already installed it, so I don't need to do that. But it's very, very simple. And after you have installed those two, double click the setup.exe. Don't worry if you don't see the .exe, it just means your system is hiding the extension. It's, it's the one with this icon. Double click it and it will start to install. Choose wherever you want to install it, not that big a deal for me, and install. It will then add an icon to your desktop and you can launch the program automatically as well. I'm not going to do that now, I'm gonna finish and close this. And there you go, you've got the icon to run this. You can now delete the folder if you want. Uh, you're not quite done yet though. You need to run the program once and it will probably tell you your video card is not detected. Um, you've got a few other things to do beforehand. It's detected mine because I have previously installed this and it remembers my choices. Go along to setup. You have to choose the video card here. In my case, I've got the GTX 670. And you also were gonna find these three paths are probably empty. You're going to need to fill them in. You're going to need to know where your Skyrim INI file is. And for me, as you can see, users, gopher, documents, my games, Skyrim. That is where I find it. You're gonna to need to know where that is. It's the same place all your saves are as well. You need to put in the main program file, the tesv.exe file. You should know where to find that. The default location is in program files, unfortunately, uh, but I have mine installed on its own hard disk. If you are running something like SKSE, you also need to put that path in as well. That is important. Once you've got those added, hit save. All the rest I left completely and utterly um, default for now. Oh, one thing you should know is if you're using a mod like an ENB or RCRN that has a D3D9.dll file, it may stop the, the numbers appearing in game. So the FPS, the CPUs, all those things, they might not work. You still get the graphs when you exit the game, but not the numbers in game. There is an option here, attempt support for custom D3D9.dll. It is experimental. You can try it and see if it works for you. Hit save and then launch Skyrim from the monitor. Once you're in game, as you can see, I've got all the information up there at the top. And when you quit the game, you will have a set of graphs telling you what the resources were so you can check how it went up and down. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I hope it was helpful.